Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to another Honkai Star Rail playthrough session. We have officially finished everything on my to-do list within the Herda Space Station. I'm about 10 hours or so into the game, believe it or not, between getting all of my pulls for the standard banner, the beginner banner, getting a wide array of characters, showcasing the mount in combat and their overall interesting lore bits, like going through all of the character ratings for the, the rating pistol, seeing all the curios and Easter eggs and lore factors regarding the game and doing some of the side missions getting as many of the collectibles i can in the space station i wanted to just cover as much ground as i could before we move forward with the story with the cutscenes, with the next world we're going to be going to and so we are officially ready to take that next journey to take that next step i hope you guys have been enjoying the playthrough series thus far a couple things really quick that i want to get you guys caught up with do not be like me make sure that when you come to this side of the space station you do not not mistaken this treasure chest as part of the bench pretty sure i'm not the only one who got debated by this but i'm 10 hours in and uh, i fumbled the bag wait a minute can i actually get this chest people come to the space station but the reason uh, the researchers are oblivious to the presence of the chest please don't tell me i got debated you're about to open this chest when suddenly a reprimand rings in your ear why you It was too good to be true. Are you serious right now? Oh my God. How was I supposed to know that belonged to him? Don't be like me, gamers. Be better, okay? That is living, breathing proof that I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. I can't believe I just got double jebated. I have other things I gotta tell you, but I don't even know if I know what I'm talking about at this point. <laughs> Anyways, I recently just went to the restroom and between my transition, Serval actually has a pretty interesting idol animation. I'm gonna wait here and see if it plays through properly. She has like this singing melody because it seems like she's like a musician or like a rock star or something like that. She's got a guitar. She's got a crazy like badass punk rock design dun, 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 dun. she does that little melody and earlier in my playthrough gepard has an idol animation where he's trying to sing or do like some melody and i was like gepard stick to your day job okay has anybody done the nah, 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 nah. <laughs> My guy's trying to sing a tune right now. He does that animation where he's like foolishly trying to do like the tunes and whatnot. I wonder if that's implying that he knows Serval. They also both have blue eyes and the same kind of colored hair. And actually, now that I think about it, when you go into Gepard's light cones, I do have this light cone here. Are they siblings? I have a feeling that that's what they're getting at here. She's got the same like blue flower on her and they're both rocking blue. She's got like a blue like feather on the side here instead of the flower. I'm going with that. I'm gonna say that Gepard and Serval are the siblings that are shown on the light cone. And the giveaway for me was the fact that he was was trying to sing the same tune that she's singing and if i'm wrong then guess what i'm wrong but i don't need you guys to give me the answer we'll find out as we play another thing that i recently discovered and i don't know when this came about but there are these memory bubbles there's like a ton of them around here and i heard that this has a lot of like lore and stuff like that i'm probably gonna read most of them off stream but i wanted to at least showcase one of them if any of you guys come across it apparently it gives you a little bit of information on certain things in the game so this is the memory bubble on aeons bubbles are floating in the air with a colorful glow gliding on their surface for some reason they form an image that seems to carry a profound meaning you are sure you saw a red sun descending onto a snowy mountain and a girl in a robe falling under the tip of a sword you have even heard someone softly laughing everything is real and it is not your imagination touch the bubble you extend your arm and your fingertip stops extremely close to the bubble nothing happens perhaps you should ask for more information information from someone who knows what it is oh what the hell that was an aeon memory bubble well i'll have to follow up on those other memory bubbles there's a bunch of them around that i'm now noticing like there's one right here on the steps there's another one on the far end of the space station i think there's another one like around the side over here but that's just to kind of keep in mind if for any of you guys that want to get into a little bit of dank lore but with all of that said we are ready to officially progress through the story i believe the current mission that i have is to board the 
Astral Express and carry on starward. Oh shit, there's another bubble right here. Wow, they actually littered these around the place, unable to communicate. I'm gonna probably just read those off stream and retain like whatever lore information it gives me. Oh shoot, Don Hung, what's going on, my dude? Oh, it's you. Do you have something on your mind? Always, my dude. Where are we going? You're really good at taking care of others. What did I do? You've saved me from countless battles. You're always the first one to charge into battle. Your judgment is always accurate. It's about being observant at all times and carefully making the best choice for the situation. Yep. You can do it too. Hey, I do that all the time. What are you talking about? I think you're not bad yourself. Thank you. I didn't think you approved of me. If you're referring to what I think about you joining the Astral Express, you're overthinking it. My position is simple. It doesn't matter to me. I suggest you ignore my opinions and make your own choice. Well, maybe if you stop giving me your opinions, I can come up with my own. You ever think about that? You didn't seem like someone who likes to travel. Being on the Express isn't exactly the same as traveling or adventuring. The Astral Express symbolizes trailblazing. Going with the flow. Trailblazing implies the unknown, be it unknown risks, or unknown rewards. Flying by the seat of your pants. In my opinion, the unknown is no more terrifying than the known. In fact, mm. the unknown signifies something we can control and change. Remember, guys, there are known knowns, but there are known unknowns, but there's also unknown unknowns, which are things that we don't know that we don't know. I understand. Okay, then. All right, let me think things over. Dong Hung gives a slight nod and shifts his gaze elsewhere. All right, sir. I will see you aboard the Astral Express. All right, March 7. Oh my god. What a fucking view. Bro, I thought I was about to fall off the side there. Look at that ginormous planet. It's rotating too. Holy shit, that's huge. Hey, I heard the news. You're coming with us on the express, right? Hell yeah. Do you want me to come along? Do I even need to say it? <laughs> I think we're becoming fast friends. Isn't that enough? Aw, I agree. But you look like you've got something on your mind. Come on, out with it. This E2 Gepard is really weighing down on me, I'll tell you. Oh, how times fly. Getting nostalgic already? Yeah, I've been on this freaking space station for 10 hours. I already call it home. When you were passed out, all I thought was I had to look after you. And then you picked up the bat just incredible yeah hey bada bada in the blink of an eye you knocked that big fella into mr yang's black hole and saved me i still haven't thanked you properly yet oh well trust me that aeon was about to make me destroy the entire planet i think welts helped me out nah we're not splitting up here how did you join the express i'd like to know too I was already on the train when I woke up. Oh boy. You're just a lovely bag of secrets, aren't you? I was just drifting out there in space and got picked up by the express. Amazing, right? <laughs> Define amazing. Does this kind of thing happen often? Crazy stuff like that? Not too often. It sure freaked me out. I feel like everybody on the Astral Express has a different, like, wacky story for how they came about. Like, this girl is just traveling out in space, just freaking wandering aimlessly until they found her. I have a freaking atomic bomb inside of me, and I'm like a freaking receptacle of some sort. Lord knows what Don Hang and Himiko's story is. But every encounter I've had since coming aboard the express has been strange to say the least. For example, going to the desert to catch something called a sandfish, hmm. correcting a gravitational field to flip an upside down castle, or almost getting my head cracked open by a <laughs> Galena ball falling from the sky while trying to avoid a sleeping reindeer on the road. Ooh, what? Looking back now, it all seems quite dangerous, but I had the crew there with me, so the problems didn't seem all that bad. That upside down castle reference reminds me of Fischl in like the Imanokreish. I'm thinking about if I should get on the express. Of course you should. Why wouldn't you? There's only four of us now, plus Pom Pom. Pom Pom? Each of us can have our own carriage to sleep in. You wouldn't have the heart to leave your carriage unmanned, would you? Maybe. Sounds more like a problem for you guys. Damn. I don't know what the carriage is like. Then come aboard and take a look for yourself. I like March 7th. She's great. All right, let me think it over. I'll be waiting for you. Now, if I don't go on the train, March 7th is going to be sad and it's going to be all all my fault so no pressure gamers we gotta do it for her now yo this train this train is fucking goaded holy shit yo where's my fucking five star gepard cucked me dude open up i better see gold when i walk into this train we're gonna have problems dude okay have you thought things through i want to join all of a sudden i still have something to talk to you about go ahead speak your mind thank you there's no need to be so formal you helped us defeat that big fella anyway hmm. plus 
If we keep making pleasantries, we'll waste a whole day. I'm on day two, and I only just got to the train, so I'm all about wasting time. You've done me a huge favor by defending the space station from the Antimatter Legion, and know that while Herta may not admit it, she owes me one. <laughs> she won't refuse me if I ask for a favor in return, and it's probably not too much to ask for a rare item from the space station, right? Am I the rare item? How about we continue talking on the express? I'll make you a cup of coffee. My special blend. Let's go. Coffee with Emiko. Pog, have you taken care of everything you need? <laughs> I was ready ages ago. I've been here so many times before. It should have just been an ordinary trip for me. Emiko's like, I've been waiting here for you for days. What are you doing? But everything's not so ordinary anymore, is it? Yeah. Walking the same path over and over will never be the same. There will always be something new. That's the meaning of trailblazing. True. What's the next stop for the Express? As always, to follow in the footsteps of Akivili. Sometimes we stop on other worlds and we'll continue to do so. There are countless next stops in the galaxy. I assume the Astral Express is basically the followers of Akiveli, the trailblaze train Aeon. I love the vast reaches of space, and the Express does too. I want to seek out new worlds, and the Express wants to return to its former path. Mm, why invite me to join? Because you're different. Because of the Stellaron, you mean? Well, that might be the biggest reason. <laughs> It's not the only one. Okay. I think you need a chance. A chance to discover just how different you really are from everyone else. Everybody keeps telling you how special you are and how you have a Stellaron inside you. Yep. But that's already plain as day to you. And no matter who tells you, be it me or Herta or anybody, mm. it's not the same thing as feeling it yourself. I feel like I'm about to burst with energy. You have to experience enough to know if you've gained or lost anything because of the Stellaron and to know who you really are. True. Learn to control the Stellaron and then you can control your destiny. Oh shit. So I wonder if the Stellaron is going to be kind of like the core that allows us to attach ourselves to multiple paths because I don't know if it's possible for you to follow multiple paths at once. It seems like everyone else is just kind of like you're on this one path and that's what you're devoted to. So I wonder if the Stellaron is allowing us to to kind of align ourselves with multiple aeons. The Stellaron might still be an enigma, but the fact of the matter is, it's a part of you. Mm. And you have to embrace this before you can move forward into the future. All righty, Himiko. No more questions. So, have you thought things through? I would like to join the Express. Then come with me. Let's go! All aboard! The oh. <laughs> Yo, music? Let's go! Get on. Hello, Himiko. <laughs> Yo, the game's over. This is the end. Of oh, bye, everybody. <clears throat> Damn. I'm over here. <laughs> Why do you look so angry? Damn, he's like, all those fucking five stars knocked me off the freaking train. You over there looking dumbfounded. <laughs> yes, Pom Pom's talking to you. Pom Pom's pissed about all those five stars, dude. Himiko told Pom Pom about your situation. Now listen up. <clears throat> Pom Pom will only say this once. Okay. Damn, they run a tight ship. Pom Pom's sure there have been lots of people telling you how special you are lately, but this is the Astral Express, and everyone on here has their secrets. I'm sure they do. Since you chose to board, you can abide by the rules. You're not the only special one here. You'd best remember that. Okay. I'm Pom Pom, the conductor. Just come find me if you have any trouble. Yo, this music is goaded. What the heck? Actual vocals? I was not expecting that. My heart lies with the stars. Interstellar guide. Complete operation briefing according to the instructions to obtain rewards. Ooh. This is the, um, like the adventure handbook, right? Let's go. Complete operation briefing to get corresponding rewards. Okay, okay. Trailblaze level eight. Yo, this cabin looks so clean. What the heck? This is so different. We actually have vocal music. Come with me, take the journey. Yo, I'm on board the train, let's get it. Hold on, let me talk to Welt really quick. What's going on, my dude? Oh, it's you, how do you feel? Full of energy, like I can explode at any second. Great, looks like your stamina is really quite special. Mm-hmm. In any case, I have to thank you for saving March. You guys saved me too, that, that's what I was gonna say. All I did was calm that thing inside you down temporarily. <laughs> By beating you over the head with my cane. 
I don't want to frighten you, but the truth is you won't ever be in the clear while it's still inside your body. Yeah. However, as long as the Stellaron is still in your body, you should be careful what you do. I don't know if Himiko and I can suppress it again. Yeah, I gotta get my shit together. I won't bore you any longer. Hmm. So much happened at the space station. You must be tired. This guy's dripped out. I love Welt's design. There should be some time until the next warp jump, so feel free to walk around and familiarize yourself with the environment. Himiko, my queen. What do you think? Does the Astral Express look the same as you imagined? No, it actually looks way better on the inside. As I expected, it looks like a train. Ah, come on. It looks way better. Everyone on the express is a passenger. We're all heading towards an unknown destination. Like we're traveling together. Yeah, this is kind of fun. Maybe that's why the Trailblaze chose such a look. March and Don Hung should both be in their rooms right now. Yeah, I was about to say they're not in here. You can go look for them. You youngsters should get along well. Hmm. <laughs> what about here? We usually meet up here, but our personal cabins are in the next carriage. That makes sense. Also, don't mind Pom Pom's antics. <laughs> they're actually pretty interested in you. It's just that we haven't had new passengers on the express for yeah. a long while. Pom Pom's over here running a tight ship. I won't steal Pom Pom's thunder. If you have any questions, just go ask our conductor. Alrighty, look around the parlor car. Yeah, this parlor car looks so clean. Oh shit, we got some chest going on. Oh, what the heck is this? Omni synthesizer. Oh, what the heck? Okay. Oh, what is this? Himiko likes using the phonograph a lot. She says it can play melodies from the past. Oh? Welt likes collecting these jet black discs. It seems like they could be antiques. You'd oh! you be very happy if you could bring a few back. Is this basically our version of the jukebox? I know Genshin has one. Oh! Alright, I don't know the names of any of the songs. Oh, that is clean. By exploring various worlds, you can obtain new records to unlock new tracks. Oh, shit! Hold on, let's see. The game is on. What a jam! Oh, this is Silver Wolf's theme? Spacewalk, this is my jam right here. This is my favorite track in the game so far. I'm so happy I know the name of it now. I'm a creature of habit. I know I've been listening to this track the whole time on the space station, but I really like it, so. Hey, you don't have any questions to ask Pom Pom? Oh, I'm sorry. I thought I was allowed to go to their cart first. Is it because you think Pom Pom talks too much? No. Or is it Pom Pom's age? You youngsters got to learn to bridge that generation gap. My bad. I thought it would let me come back. I was going to always come back and talk to him. Wait, where's March 7th room? Why are you interested in her room? Because we're friends. Ah, oh, Pom Pom remembers Himiko saying that you saved her. Yeah, that too. Mmm, very brave very foolhardy damn but that is what a trailblazer should be like march 7th's room is in the express sleeper compartment she's always running around so <laughs> she might not be there okay what about don hung's room don hung's room oh you mean the archives sure i guess uh, he's just sort of living in there i guess <laughs> I can't be bothered getting him out. It's like, yeah, he's living in the closet. March 7th's room is right next to the archives. You can visit him on the way. Okay. A phonograph? You recognize this as well? Uh, Himako always likes to bring back weird junk and try to fix it. That also got modified a bit. Yeah, looks like it. Cool. That's all my questions for today. Pom Pom still needs to prepare for the Express's warp jump. You can look around the place yourself. Okay. No matter where you go on this train, <laughs> Pom Pom will always have my eyes on you. Oh, okay. I, I promise. I'll be on my best behavior. Pom Pom, you always have your eyes on me even when I'm sleeping. What the heck? I better not do anything I'll regret. Pom Pom's always watching. Bro, what the heck? This place looks goaded. Oh, I love the decor. I want to live on this train. Are you kidding me? Oh, there seems to be the sound of electronic equipment. Oh, is that March 7th's like camera? Who's there? Oh, never mind. It's me. I haven't even knocked. I learned to sense incoming visitors after people kept barging in so frequently. Damn, this man's literally listening for anyone to be like, who is it? What do you want? Nani? Sir, are you okay? Oh my God. Dude, this is the archive? Jeez. Oh my God, this place looks incredible. Books in the archive? Paper documents are placed tidily on the shelves. Like Dong Hung said, the content is very dense and some of it is even handwritten. Oh my God, this place looks incredible. Bookshelf. <gasps> is this my archive? Dude, we found a lot of books. Gotta go through all of this stuff eventually. Sheesh, all the lore. Wait a minute. The Afro Hairstyle Association? Yo, how do I join this association? That's goaded. 
Not bad. So we have an archive section. Damn, Don Hung just literally sleeps on the floor. Don Hung's bed. Bitch, you live like this? <laughs> It's only one thin quilt and it looks very warm. Being surrounded by all the books and records provides a surprising sense of security. Uh, can he really sleep on such a hard bed? Yes. A hard bed is good for your spine. A bed that's too soft will end up hurting you. How did he know? Did my gaze betray me? <laughs> what the heck? You need a cross between soft and firm. You can't just go all like hard bedding. Can I help you? Just looking around. Feel free. This is open to everyone on the express. I love how he's like, yeah, people just keep barging into my room. But this room is also open to everybody. So it's like, don't you want an actual bedroom where you can have privacy? While many of the roads that Akivili traveled along no longer exist, I think it's still meaningful to record our adventures as current passengers of the express. Did the hype train fall off the tracks? Is that what he's saying? I enter the collected data into the archives data bank. I try to catalog the people and places the express encounters. Nice. And compare and contrast them with the existing records. All right. Do you see the terminal over there? Yes. It can be used to view information already stored in the data bank. Do give it a go. Oh, this one. I thought he was talking about the other one. <laughs> The databank stores various information collected during trailblazing expeditions across the universe. Oh, character archives? Light cone? Oh, this is kind of... Oh! Character voices? Character stories? Hi, I'm Welt Yang. If there's something you need help with, you can come find me anytime. Oh, dear. Corey Landis, VAs. Oh, God, it's Genshin all over again. It's literally Genshin Impact all over again. You gotta level up the character this time. So there's no friendship experience. I just have to keep playing the game and level them up, and then I get their story. That's actually way easier to manage and way faster than taking two to three weeks to to get friendship level holy shit and it seems way smaller way more compact and manageable a seasoned member of the express crew the passion burned in his heart burns anew as he enjoys this fresh adventure occasionally he would sketch the experiences in a notebook nice the archive is pretty clean too okay so i have all the four stars i think and four or five stars <laughs> do i really want to risk it do i really want to go hard for all of these characters right now Aeons. Oh, it talks about all of them. Nanook the Destruction, Lon the Hunt, Naus the Erudition, Ouroboros. Okay, I definitely got to read up on all of these. This lore is exciting. Whoa, imaginary tree. <laughs> What is happening right now, dude? Holy moly. Bro, this shit's way too dank. Xander Kuwabara. Oh, that's number one of the Genius Society. Lord Ravager. All this lore is pretty compact. Like, you don't have to go looking for everything. It seems like everything's already here for you. All the terms are maxed out. The only thing that's kind of, like, iffy is, like, the artifacts, the enemy types. But everything else is kind of filling in pretty quickly. So you can pretty much, like, learn about all the lore in, like, this one reading archive which is really nice yeah that's super convenient i feel like understanding and focusing on the lore is going to be pretty manageable they're giving you a lot of upfront lore to kind of wrap your head around which i like i know it's a bit overwhelming it's a lot to throw at you at once but it seems pretty manageable you knock but there's no response the door is unlocked should i go in uh one look should be fine my inner me didn't want to do it but i'm kind of curious they did say that march 7th wouldn't be around actually hold on investigate it's locked as a particular set of coffee okay this is himiko's room the hint of coffee this is probably welt's room the door doesn't even move an inch as if it is glued in space damn this man's got a freaking like black hole singularity holding his door closed oh i love the pictures such a cozy train looks like i have no choice but to snoop inside of March 7th's room. I'm so sorry. Oh! This is cute. Oh my god. This is such a cool room. I want to see the other rooms now. Oh, look at this. What are these? Little pajamas? Dressing mirror? This is a little shy, full-fledged mirror. No matter how much you fiddle with it, it won't move. All right, this is definitely a girl's room. <laughs> Oh, I love this, though. Wall of photos. Make a choice I won't regret. Reach the future. Ah. So much had happened in such a short time. How the hell is she taking pictures of the freaking cutscenes? My immersion. Rest area with the teddy bear. It's got some sweets and, like, cake and, like, biscuits over here, too. You got this little <laughs> pon-pon's toy. The conductor pon-pon doll. It doesn't have any clothes. What the heck? This thing's massive. 
There's a bunny shaped lounge chair with a teddy bear sitting in it. A fitting metaphor for their conflicted owner. Aww. March 7th bed. It's not very tidy. It looks super cozy though. That comforter looks really comfy. Desk. March 7th desk. All kind of gizmos are sewn around it. I love her room. She's got so much love and personality put into this. The lights, the little knickknacks and ornaments and pictures. She's definitely trying to like capture a lot of her experiences. After staring at it for a while, you realize that memory memories on the wall aren't just your adventures yeah look at her she's so sweet oh look at that is it chiming music that's really neat though she's got an entire like astral space map on her ceiling interact with the photo wall again this is kind of creepy man how did you manage to shoot some of these angles yeah that's what i'm saying like these are ripped straight from the cutscenes. like what's going on the mirror doesn't reflect your appearance maybe it only wants to show march 7th huh that's weird so when i look at the mirror it doesn't show me that's pretty sus hello Attention all passengers. Uh-oh. Attention all passengers. Pompon nose. The express is about to conduct a warp jump. Okay. All passengers, please gather at the main hall. All righty, dude, we're about to go supernova. Hey, you. Uh, there you are. There I am. I was at your room. You weren't there. Wait, this is your first trip. So that should be double the excitement, right? True. I'm ready. I'm ready to go. I'm a little worried about what lies ahead. Uh, you're just like Mr. Yang, always worrying about things that haven't even happened yet. Damn well. Well, it's all the way in the back over there now. Jesus. Young people should be energetic. Here, let's do some relaxation exercises exercises. Hmm. The first step is to grab a hold of the root cause of your anxiety. The Stellaron beating in my chest. Okay, I got it. You really got it, huh? The second step is to focus all your anxiety on that point. The Stellaron that's gonna erupt and kill me and everyone around me inside my body. All right, I'm ready for step three. Seems like you're a natural. It's not easy to reach this level of enlightenment. We should all be like March 7th. It's that easy. Now for step three. Yank out that anxiety and cast it away with all your might i'm pretty sure if i yank out that stellaron i'm gonna die <laughs> well i've cast out all my anxiety now there you go really i've never been able to do it successfully myself hey just do it what does it feel like like all your worries have been swept away yeah something like that damn march 7th you sweet summer child hey everyone's moving around what's wrong <laughs> you look like you were about to say something i think i know what you're going to ask oh You've come to the right person. Oh, okay. Are you going to explain to me why the gotcha rates did me dirty and gave me three guepards? I'd love to know. Oh, look at that. You actually don't know what I was going to say. Ooh, you want to know more about the Express? I'm glad. After all, it's an important companion of ours. Oh my god, big lore. The history of the Express? Give it to me. The Astral Express was a tool created by Akivili the Trailblaze, who uh -huh. used it to transport themselves and the Nameless across the galaxy. Ooh. It is rumored that there are other vehicles like it but the express has no such records okay so the astral express was created by akavelli when i found the express its memory had been severely damaged with much of its valuable information lost mm. all i know is that the express is an aspect of creation built by akavelli themselves and used to travel the cosmos. Okay. As for how it was built and how it was damaged, I do not have an answer. Interesting. About where the Express is headed. The Express is traveling on a route that the Trailblaze once embarked on. The names of some destinations have been lost, but the first and final stops were both at Pagana. Akivili's home world. So are we going there? Is that the end game? Is Pagana the end game? We speculate. The Astral Express started its journey from Pagana, stopping at each destination along the way before returning there for its next journey. Okay. However, the appearance of the Stellaron has caused a delay at each stop. AKA for each stop, it's going to take about a year and uh, each stop is going to send us to the next area and then the next area and then the next area and then Pagana in like eight years. Pagana is basically this game's version of Snejnaya and Celestia. I'm calling it. About the Express's source of power. There's a legend in the galaxy. The heart of Akivili themselves lies in the core of the Astral Express, oh. providing it with the power to travel between worlds. That makes sense. But I found no evidence of that aboard the Express. Besides, the Express existed before the Trailblaze fell. There's no way they could have had two hearts, right? Unless they're twins. However... 
it is likely that the Express possesses some sort of mechanism to transfer power from the Trailblaze. Interesting. It wouldn't be possible with a normal Path Strider. Wow. So we're getting a bunch of lore on like the Aeon itself. The Fallen Eon. Deceased Trailblaze. Their passing is still a mystery, but of all the known eons, Akivili was the closest to mankind. Oh, so this train is basically like the remnants of the original that died? In the databank aboard the Express, it is recorded that they walked among the mortals, adventuring, fighting, and celebrating with them. Huh. Although they were an eon restrained by the Prima Mobile, Akivili enjoyed a freedom similar to us mortals. Interesting. They were different from most, but their passing came so suddenly that it was thought they were killed by another Eon. Oh, shit. I don't believe that to be the case. Oh, boy, we got an Eon killer out there. That was a lot of lore right there. Holy shit. <laughs> the galaxy is endlessly vast. I wouldn't know where to begin, especially when you ask me like that so suddenly. Holy shit. Bro, are they going to answer every question before we get to this next place? My God, about its nature. <laughs> I've been to many different worlds. Yet this is exciting. I still know very little about the galaxy, simply because it's too vast. As for its nature, there are a few theories that I can share with you. I love a good theory. The most popular is probably the Cosmos Tree Theory, proposed by Xandar, emanator of erudition and the first member of the Genius Society. He compared the galaxy to an enormous imaginary tree, with its leaves being individual universes. No shot, bro, they're doing this. Bro, they're like, hey, tree exists. That leaf is Honkai Impact third. That leaf is Genshin Impact. That leaf is Honkai Star Rail. Bro, this is huge. Therefore, only eons who draw their energy from the imaginary and emanators who are blessed by eons can travel through the spaces filled with imaginary energy. Oh shit. Planets where civilizations exist are so similar. I Garen fucking T you. That's why Welt is the only character right now with imaginary. If he was able to jump from Honkai Impact 3rd to Honkai Star Rail, the imaginary aspect of his ability is what allowed him to do that, I think. Because he's the only imaginary character in the game. However, the theory has its flaws. Holy shit. Elias Salas, the 56th member of the Genius Society, invented remote detection, oh. disproving that the imaginary is unique. This shook the foundation of the cosmos tree theory. Oh shit. There are other theories as well. The stretching theory, the heat torch theory, and the parallel imaging theory. Nah, bro. The Riddlers claim the galaxy is just a dream, and IX's followers seem to like that claim. Oh my god. The dream that is yet to be dream- Dude, I'm getting big Genshin vibes, man. Dainsleaf was on to something, bro, about the Aeons. Eons are the most mysterious beings in the galaxy. All we know is that they ascended from the form of intelligent beings. Bro. As for the how and why, even the geniuses over at the Genius Society haven't the slightest clue. The, the term ascended hits so different after Ruby Volume 9, number one. And also when I hear ascended in this context, it reminds me of like Celestia and Genshin as well. So it's like, bro, can people just stop ascending, please? It's for your own good. Upon ascending to Eonhood, that being gains power over the paths, free to choose the allocation of imaginary energy mm. however they wish, while suffering the restrictions of the Prima Mobile. All right, I don't know what the Prima Mobile is. They mentioned that with the Achiavelli. The Eon of Destruction seeks only to destroy the universe, while the Eon of Erudition wants to find the answer for all that exists. Damn. Meanwhile, the Eon of Preservation continues to forge walls, and the Eon of Enigmata devotes itself to obscuring all that is known. It's almost kind of like religion in a way. Like all of these gods have a certain path and along that path are followers that become devoted to that path and then they create their like establishments like the garden of recollection or the icp and stuff like it's literally like it feels like a religious following kind of thing a cloud of mystery shrouds the eons i heard madame herda recruited a team to try and solve the mysteries about them yeah she created a whole simulated universe too about the factions compared to the eons the factions are much easier to understand mm. mortals with the same objective gather together to practice their understanding of eons and paths organized religion right there ladies and gentlemen <laughs> 
factions are basically organized religion. Many eons are unwageable, but the factions are close to us. Yeah. After Akivili trailblazed across the galaxy, gotcha. people became aware of the existence of other worlds. It makes so much sense. Gradually, more people started trying to use the power of the eons to travel between worlds. It just seems that like the gods actually exist. If you follow a path strong enough, I think you can become an aeon. To become an aeon is almost kind of like creating your own religion in a way, like on some flying spaghetti monster type shit, right? Because all of these aeons were ordinary individuals. Like some of them were machines, some of them were humans. They like ascended to the point where they became a god and created a religion around like a certain path and had followers and stuff like that too. That's pretty incredible. The Interastral Peace Corporation is a good example. They worship Klopoth, yep. the Eon of Preservation, but somehow became the largest economic entity in the galaxy. Wow. Another example is the Genius Society. There are no shortages of eccentrics like Madame Herda who yeah. dedicate themselves to scientific research under the protection of the erudition. And they have Naus. But Naus was created by the first genius. These factions possess the same power as us to voyage between worlds. Huh. It would be hard to travel through the galaxy without them. I love this system. It's so fascinating. Yeah, Honkai Star Rail lore is immediately grabbing me. Genshin and even Honkai Impact 3's lore did not grab me this quickly, but they're really trying to get people. And I love that it's voice acted too, which helps a lot as well. I know this is a lot to take in, but it's really easy to understand and digest for me. Lore has been great so far. We have one more path. The birth of an eon gives rise to a path. Yep. The nature of the paths remains a mystery, leaving us to draw an analogy in a way that mortals can understand. It's a philosophical concept of sorts. Another thing too is that kind of like how Dendro shook the foundation of Genshin's like combat system. There's multiple aeons in the game and I feel like we're going to get more than just the current seven paths that we have in the game, which can like shake up how like classes and roles work in the future. I don't really know what exactly they would do if they do decide to add more paths, but I feel like it's a possibility. A person is considered to be on a path when their will overlaps with that path. Yeah. If the person has a strong enough Enough will, they can draw power from that path. Yep. Those who can do so are called path striders. Anyone with a vision is considered an allogene and can ascend to Celestia, has the potential to. So I feel like that's almost kind of like a similar equivalent. That's why I think the Stellarons come from Nanook because we are automatically of the destruction path. We are channeling the power of the path of destruction, which is Nanook's power as the Aeon. Path striders possess extraordinary power, but are still insignificant significant compared to the eons mm. like a drop of water in a vast ocean yeah sometimes eons will bestow a mortal with their power making them an emanator of that eon i think we're an emanator of destruction i should mention that once a path is open it cannot be closed even with the fall of its eon Ooh. that is how we are still able to travel across the stars again. despite akivili's passing that makes sense wow that's cool now i just wonder if we can switch paths if the trailblazer has multiple versions like a fire version an ice version a wind version version is that still considered destruction right because that's kind of like the traveler the traveler has different elements but they're still like a sword user so i wonder if we are stuck in the destruction path or if we'll be able to have different paths as time goes on about the trailblaze trailblaze is our mission and the source of strength that powers the express to travel across the galaxy mm. about exploration explore the unknown world to continue our journey ahead i mean that's pretty self-explanatory about understanding understand the local culture and immerse ourselves within it okay so this is basically what they stand for establish a connection with the new world rejoice with it and share in its fears true basically just immerse yourself as best you can connect worlds together carving an endless path I have another question. I don't have any other questions. Damn, Himiko just unloaded an entire like encyclopedia of knowledge on me. And now I feel like Welt is going to do the exact same thing in like this smug, I know more than I'm letting on kind of way. Welt Yang. This is your first time experiencing the warp jump. So a little discomfort is unavoidable. Uh-oh. If you're really anxious about it, I can stay here and have a chat with you. I, I'm not anxious, but I'll chat with you. About our companions. About everyone on the Express? Uh, who would you like to know about? Ooh, everything. Tell me everything. Himiko. She's the owner of the Express. Ah. Mm, joke around calling Pom Pom the conductor, but 
Everyone knows Himiko is the boss. Himiko is queen. It all started with her encounter with the Astral Express, and they haven't been apart since then. Mm. She's extremely passionate, like a, a burning sun. <laughs> However, she remains mysterious most of the time. Once in a while, you feel that she's burning herself out, trying to accomplish her dream. Damn. Burning herself out really hits different after what I've played in Honkai so far. Only someone like her is worthy of the Astral Express. I think Himiko's vision of her whole life revolves around uh, a very important dream. Okay. We gotta keep that dream alive, I guess. Pom Pom. To be honest, I don't know when Pom Pom appeared. I think it was before I came to the Express. Oh. No, wait, maybe it was after. <laughs> well, they just picked up a rabbit who started talking and made a mascot. Pom Pom is like the spirit of the Astral Express. Hmm. Whenever anyone on the Express needs help, they will appear immediately. It would be ill-advised to underestimate them. Damn. Pom Pom was like, I have my eye on you no matter where you go, which means that they saw us snooping around March 7th's room. Pom Pom is terrifying when they get angry. <laughs> yes. It's terrifying. They just become a giant jacked rabbit. Don Hung. Dan Hung is a lonely child. Aww. He may appear distant and cold, but his heart is kind. Hmm. Perhaps he's the way he is today because he spent so much time on the run. Oh. Sometimes he reminds me of myself when I was young. Yo, what's going on, Dan Hung? He used to work at the Xianzhou. We don't know what he's running from. He once told me that he didn't know either. All he knew was that something was chasing him and that he had to run. What the heck? Man's getting chased? So he boarded the ship of a troop called the Morning Actors and escaped the IPC. After a while, he made his way to the Express and he's stayed here longer than anywhere else. Jesus. Okay, so he might have like family troubles or history or something like that. Don't worry. No matter who or what wants to hurt Don Hung, we won't let them. Those who dare attack members of the Astral Express should be prepared to suffer the wrath of me <coughs> and Himiko. Damn, the freaking goats. All right, Dan Hung. He might have like a dark past. About, I'd love to know about March 7th if you'll tell me anything. Did Himiko tell you about March 7th? No. She was trapped in ice, floating through space. We happened upon her and rescued her. That's so wild. Wild, man. What the hell? Was she created by like an ice god or something? It was a unique type of ice known as six-phased ice, a substance that adheres to imaginary law, meaning that external forces cannot change its form. Oh, okay. So she's really important. She's very mysterious. She's of the imaginary? Whoever sealed her inside the six-phased ice no matter who it is, did so either to protect her or banish her. Oh, shit. I believe she had been floating through space for some time. Damn, and y'all thought her out? What the heck? Bro, I swear to God, she's Paimon. <laughs> what the hell, dude? She's so enigmatic, and we're not gonna learn shit about her for years, I feel like. About Stellarons. It's impossible to trace the origins of this phenomenon. When it's observed by humans, or should I say, once it begins to affect the physical world. Oh, damn. It's already too late to reverse. I wonder if Stellarons are like the equivalent of the Abyss because the Abyss isn't of the world of Tevat. Also, it kind of acts like a cancer, like it kind of just destroys everything around it. That's almost like Stellarons or, or even like Honkai energy. It almost seems like these are all kind of equivalents of their own universe. It's like a sudden storm that appears on a calm ocean. This phenomenon causes the smooth journey through the expanse to be filled with dangers. Yeah, I'm sure. The mechanism whereby this mutation and corrosion spreads is the Stellarons. Yeah, and we got one of those big chilling in us. It promulgated rapidly like cancer cells. So the International Peace Corporation named it the cancer of all worlds. Yep, there it is. Damn, about the antimatter legion. They are the army ruled by the eon of destruction. Nanook. Okay, confirmation. As Nanook's followers, they stand against all life and civilization and execute the will of destruction, disseminating chaos and calamity. So they're basically the followers of the god of destruction, and their goal is to just destroy everything without reason. Their actions 
cannot be explained by reason. Exactly. Because their only motivation and purpose is to destroy. That's wild, bro. That is so unhinged. About the fragmentum. Fragmentums are a phenomenon of corrosion. The mainstream school of thought is that stellarons catalyzed the appearance of fragmentums. Okay. All matter and space that comes into contact with the fragmentum will be turned into fragmentum creations. All right. However, you don't have to feel too burdened. At the very least, the current state of the Stellaron in your body okay. is very <laughs> stable and will not cause distortion to the outside. Yet. Put an asterisk right there. We'll come back to that in a couple years. Let's see how that adds up. Yeah, that was everything from Welt. Wow. Holy moly. I just got a freaking crash course in lore. And it was all voice acted, too. That was beautiful. That was great. Where's Don Hung? He should be here, right? Yo, you deaf? Let's go, my guy. Oh, no, he's just chilling here. You know what? You do you, fam. Hopefully, you don't have a bumpy ride. You took long enough, but at least everyone's here now. Exactly. Where is Don Hung? He won't be here, so just leave him be. So why do I have to be here? Oh, yeah. Take these. What's this? A tiny bonus from the conductor to the passenger. Think of it as an investment in your future growth. Oh, God. What is it? Oh, oh, my God. <laughs> My adventure rank rewards. Holy moly. Let's fucking go. We're gaming. Hell yeah. Level six. Oh, we got a pass. Level eight. Oh, yeah. I just hit level eight. Nice. Good shit. Easy clap, boys. Hey, okay, everyone. Hurry up and find a place to sit down. <laughs> Try not to be like March. Always running around the express <laughs> like a headless chicken. That's funny. Pom Pom's going to start the final preparations for the jump. I better hold on to something. Himiko, hold me. Oh, my God. I actually have have friends after all add friends receive support and challenge strong enemies holy moly guys the game literally says arnold you're allowed to have friends now <laughs> yo we got gamers what's the next stop on the express what the heck the universe holy shit it's child's attack the astral express <laughs> oh shit eons was that an aeon did I get dragged into a science fiction movie or something? Oh, is this me? This Stellaron thing. In Voice acting, let's go! Stars? Oh my god. I've done stuff like that before. But it wasn't stars for me, though. Aww. It was lights. This is sweet. When I first woke up after being rescued from the ice, I could see clusters of stars in front of me. Hmm. I reached out for them automatically, but they turned out to be the carriage ceiling lights. Damn. The whole crew was watching me. It was pretty embarrassing. That's eh, all good. Rescued from the ice. Oh, I forgot to tell uh, you. I mean, well told us, but you can tell us. I'd like to hear it from you, too. Before all this, I was stuck in a huge block of ice drifting through space. You know, just another day. Himeko and Mr. Yang and... Ooh. Who was it again? Anyway, they figured out a way to melt the ice and saved me. Wait, who's the other person? God damn it. That person's probably super important right now. Do you remember what happened before you were frozen? I don't remember a thing. How convenient. Who I am, where I'm from, my name... Like everything was erased from my mind. Your Paimon. March 7th was the day they found me, so it stuck. Ever since then, I've been hanging out on this train and following it to whatever destination it decides to stop at. I'm hoping that one day I can find my past. God, she's literally the Paimon of this game. Uh, what am I talking about this for? A way to get everyone down, huh? Sorry. It's fine. I was the one who brought it up. Cheer up. It's not every day someone gets to ride on the Astral Express. True, I'm on the hype train right now. Ah, here comes the conductor. <laughs> this guy? The Express has reached a safe distance from the space station. We'll be jumping in about 10 minutes. Does Pom Pom have like resting bitch face? They always look so angry. Return to your seats, please. Both of you, things could get bumpy. They look big madge. Uh, thanks, Pom Pom. But did you really have to come and remind me? I'm not a newbie, you know. <laughs> well, it wouldn't be necessary, but Miss March 7th <laughs> likes to challenge herself. Ma'am. And falls over every time. All right, these two have history. He's got to be aggressive. That's just called never giving up. <laughs> Look at this. This is literally a perfect shot. Holy moly. Conductor, can I get a juice, please? Thank you. Oh. Uh, we're jumping in five minutes. You can have something to drink when it's over. But I'm thirsty now. I remember during the live stream, they had like idle dialogue like this. And I think that was one of them. Conductor, Fasten I your want seat juice belt. and chips. Oh, and 
pick out some new flavors. Ooh. Please? Who is this? Oh, don't worry about me. I just want to see if I can stay on my feet this time. Good luck. I'm rooting for you. Thanks. I feel like I'm starting to get the hang of it. The key is using your core, waist, and leg muscles. It's not your stance that matters, but your ability to ride the inertia. There you go. Well, don't mind me. Find a place to sit down and buckle up. All right, does anyone else say anything different before we take off? Our next stop is a small planet called Eurelo 6. It's been thousands of years since the last time the Express paid a visit. Huh. The databank shows it was a lush and beautiful place, but after all this time, it's possible that dramatic changes have occurred. Okay. Interesting. Jumps are like this. Oh. They may feel novel the first few times. And then they get annoying. Slowly get used to them <laughs> after a few more. Okay. As for the mechanism, if you're interested, I'll explain it to you in detail when we have more time. Okay. Just sit and wait. Oh dear. Remember to close your eyes. It helps with the dizziness. <laughs> I'm about to get shaken up, dude. All right, let's see. A soft sofa feels like you'll fall right to sleep after sitting in it. Hold on tight and wait for the jump to finish. All righty. Hello. 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 <clears throat> All passengers, oh. please return to your seats. Really, Mark? The train is about to make the jump. I won't Hold on, everybody. <laughs> I won't fall over. I won't fall over. You might fall over. Four. Ain't no way March 7th didn't fall over from that. Are you kidding? Sheesh. Yo, March, you good? Hold up. That was kind of cool. After all those millennia, is this what your Relo 6 has become? Wait, what's happening? What's going on? So that snowy planet is our destination this time? Uh-oh. They're like, yeah, but there was never snow there to begin with. Yes. Looks like this trailblazing expedition won't be easy. Uh-oh. Spatial readout anomaly. Star rail stability is down to 12%. <laughs> that sounds awful. Schedule alteration. Seven-day stopover time extended indefinitely. Anomaly? The complex locality of this world has been affected somehow. The star rail has been blocked off by something. Oh. Take an ordinary train as an example. It's like the tracks up ahead have suddenly snapped uh, and the way forward leads straight into a collapsing abyss. Yo, at Astra Abyssos. So do we have to go to each individual world and like fix the rail carts to continue the train like moving forward? The only sensible thing to do would be to break hard, right? K kinda. If we try to force our way ahead, there could be a hefty price to pay. Yeah. This again? Don't tell me. It's gotta be. Uh-oh. The results of the preliminary analysis are here. The anomaly stems from a stellar run. This freaking cancer! It's actual cancer! It's ruining everything! Stellarons, of course. Yes, just like the one that's been placed into your body. Hey, what if I just start collecting all these Stellarons and just like start increasing my nuclear mass? I wonder what would happen if I just start collecting all of these like candy. What should we do? What exactly is a Stellaron? Stellarons are clouded in mystery. Even Herda isn't able to fully understand them. There's no need to worry. This isn't the first time our route has been obstructed by a Stellaron. Damn. Even if we don't know much about them, at least we know how to neutralize their influences. The only thing we can say for sure is that their arrival causes massive changes to civilizations and ecosystems. Damn. They also generate distortions in space, such as fragmentums. There must be an inextricable connection between the Stellaron we're dealing with here and Eurelo 6 becoming a frozen planet. Ah, uh, yeah, I called that. Our current theory is that Stellarons are seeds of disaster, planted by a certain eon throughout the universe. Mm. We can't continue to trailblaze without removing the source of the disaster. I love that it's just like an Aeon fucking around and they're just like, eh, sucks to suck, I guess. Enjoy my cancer. So we're like a chivalrous band of cosmic knights. You finally get what we're all about. <laughs> Pretty cool. Hey, I got it on the first try. I'd like to entrust this trailblazing expedition to March, Dan Hung, and you. Okay. The objective is clear. Find the Stellaron responsible for the disaster and the spatial distortions and bring it back to the Express. Okay. We'll deal with the rest. All right, we got it. Oh, Awesome. We get to work as a team again. Let's go. You're not coming? I love how one of the options was I'm kind of sleepy. Someone has to stay on the train or Pom Pom will get lonely. Aw, that's cute. AKA no five-star moment for you. Not to mention, Nanook threw us a glance just now. 
If we're targeted by the Antimatter Legion, mm. then things could go south fast. I love how there's an Aeon that's just like freaking side-eyeing us. Like, bro, what do you want from me? I just woke up. So it's still not our turn. Damn. I know you really want to go, but Aww. we should give the youngsters a chance to get out there on their own. It'll be a good opportunity for them to bond. Well, it's like, damn, I hate always staying on the train. It's so boring here. I want some action. Hey, don't worry. I pulled you from the gotcha, so we're going to be popping off. March, if you two are ready... Why not go and find Dan Hung? Yeah, this man just chilled in his room the whole time. He's probably already started collating the ecological data and survey results for Eurelo 6. It's always good to know more about the destination before you start a journey. That's true. All righty, here we go. In the withering wintry night, a grand cool adventure. Nice, nice, nice. Find Dan Hung. All right. Do they all have different dialogue every time like there's an interactive moment? Hold on. Pom pom. Each stop brings its own grand and exciting adventure. True. Have you been on an adventure before, Pom Pom? No. Aw. Pom Pom can't leave the train right now. When's it Pom Pom's turn to go on a fun, cool adventure? Pom Pom's so dejected all of a sudden. Hopefully we can take you on a journey someday, buddy. I don't know why everyone's rejecting the mascot. I don't like this. Thanks to a brilliant performance, you guys saved the space station from a moment of crisis. True. Now, the Express is relying on you to get it moving again. Remember, there are four things we do when we arrive at Explore, a new world. understand, Explore, establish, connect. Understand, establish, and connect. Yep. And I'm sure you'll get along really well with March and Dan Hung. Already have. Way ahead of you. I'm sorry, Welt. I'm pretty sure you want to go out there and be a gamer, but your time will come. Ever since the destruction sowed Stellarons across the universe, many worlds have changed. Nanook, the destruction. Yausha, the abundance. Ooh. Terminus, the finality. I've seen and learned a lot in my time. Holy shit. Still struggle to understand some of the Eon's actions. Wow. Nanook, Yaoshi, Terminus. The finality. Very interesting that they're called finality considering the recent... I still don't know it, but I know that there's like a, a Hersher of finality and there's an Aeon of finality. <laughs> a planet covered in snow and ice. Oh, dear. Will I find my answer here? Nope. This is a gotcha game. A Hoyoverse gotcha game, mind you, which means you're not going to find your answers for like six or seven years. Whoa! <laughs> Don't sneak up on me like that. I'm sorry. Why are you still here? Go find Don Hung. Exciting adventures are waiting for us. She got a little annoyed by that. I'm sorry. Damn. What the hell's wrong with me, guys? Are you doing okay after your first jump? Yeah, I'm chilling. Dizziness or retching are normal reactions. You'll feel better once you get used to it. Why weren't you with everyone else. I enjoy being alone, especially when I have important work to do. Okay. I went through the Express's database, and it seems the environment on Eurelo 6 has undergone drastic changes in the past few centuries. It was not a frozen planet to begin with. Welt says that it's caused by a Stellaron. He said so? Mm. Hmm. Considering the spatial obstacles that the Star Rail has encountered, it's highly possible. Interesting. I've conducted a preliminary survey and found that there's one area with a relatively normal temperature on the surface of the planet. By normal, <laughs> I mean a temperature that just about allows for human survival. Yeah, everything else is like frozen solid. If I had to choose a site for initial investigation on this trailblazing expedition, that would be it. I really hope there's no sheer cold here. Please, I pray. Himiko wants you, me, and March 7th to go together. As I expected. Oh! Before you came, whenever March wanted to go anywhere, Himiko would make Mr. Yang and me go with her. Oh man, that means we replaced Welt. And even after you arrived, I didn't suppose I'd be the one to be liberated of that duty. <laughs> I assume the trailblazing objective this time is to find the Stellaron on Eurelo 6 and dispel the effect it's exerting on the Star Rail, right? Probably. You should find March. I'll join you two once I'm ready. Alrighty, buddy. Talk to March 7th and set off on a new journey. We are heading on this icy planet momentarily sit tight gamers 